Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I wanted to talk to you about workflow and using session templates. Now I did a video about three years ago with the with Studio One Two. A lot has changed in Studio One since then, and my session template has evolved quite a bit since then. Uh, so I thought I would do an updated video to, to help people understand how to set this up. The reason why it's a good idea to have a session template or even different types of session templates is because it just streamlines your workflow. If you're working from scratch every time, it's gonna take you five, 10 minutes to set up the tracks that you want for a particular session. It's easier to set up a template up front. You can over configure it and just remove things as you go, right? So that's kind of the approach that I take. I have it over configured and I remove as I go. So let's take a look. So this is Studio One 3 Pro that I use. I've got uh, some nice colors to give it that color effect. Uh, one of the things that I like too is being able to colorize the uh, the tracks up here. Uh, and you can actually do that by hitting this little wrench and and selecting colorize track controls, which is kind of nice. So that just basically coordinates the color of these tracks in the tracking window with uh, the mix window. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. So first we have a reference, and I use this for bringing in a MP3 or a WAV file of a particular mix that I might be trying to reference, or if the artist has a demo track that I want to reference, it's perfect for doing that. Normally, a lot of times, if I'm starting from scratch, obviously I'm not using that, but it's there just in case I want to use it, and removable if I'm not. A second thing is, is, is drums, and I use addictive drums. So I've got it set up, and if you take here, look at the instrument, I've got it set up so that each of the different tracks within or I should say instruments within addictive drums are linked to their own track. So if you look down here in the yellow area, I've got the kick drum here, snare, and actually if I bring this up here, I can probably show you if I hit the kick, you'll see it. You'll see it hit the, the, the kick um, meter go up. If I hit the snare, the snare goes up, okay? Uh, if I hit the tom, etc. right? So this just gives you more control over each instrument and allows you to EQ each instrument. Addictive Drums has a great ability to do a lot of EQing and shaping and, and compression and stuff on each instrument. So you can actually use this program to do a lot of that. But I sometimes I like to do that in Studio One too, and that's why I have it broken out. So pretty easy to do that. And you can just see here you can you know check whichever tracks that you want to you want to see. So so that's the drums area. Now I've got two buses set up. These are basically I use these to compress to do some compression on the snare and the kick, just to give me some control over the pop uh, and the snap of those two. Actually, I have another video you can watch on that, but I separate the, that out into a, into a bus, and you can see I have, if you go back here and you look at these, I've got sends on the kick and the snare that go to these two channels, okay? And that's so that's basically what I use these for. Next would be bass. I always have a bass guitar. Now this is the blue area is the acoustic section, so to a left and right acoustic go into a bus and a left and right acoustic go into another bus. So two separate buses of acoustics. Now the whole idea is to have a bus for the left and right side of a particular instrument. So when I record guitars, I do a lot of the same parts, but recorded left and right to give you that space. And you can bring it into a bus to do uh, EQing on, the, on both of those tracks, let's just say. Now, if I'm doing an all electric recording, this stuff just gets removed. That's the beauty of having a template set up so that you don't have to uh, configure it every time. The green area are the electric guitars. So I've got three electric guitars, each going to their own bus. And then I've got a solo guitar going to its own bus. Then we go into the vocals. We've got two lead vocals in case we're gonna do double tracking, going to a lead vocal bus. And I've got four tracks for background vocals going to a background vocal bus. Then I got my section here where I've got VCA. This is a new feature in, in Studio One. VCA allows me to control, it's, I have, have it linked up and you can see here which, which of these buses go to the, v, the bus VCA, but this allows me to control all of the, the buses. So when I'm mixing it, I'm bring, and if I wanna bring the volume down of, of all of the instruments in a particular mix, I can just use this to do that, which is a really nice feature to have. You can find out more about VCA uh, in other videos on YouTube. So after that, I have my effects section. So I've got reverb, open air, and analog delay. They're there just in case. And if I'm getting to the end of a mix, 
uh, and I'm not using them. I just remove them. They're not taking up any any cycles because I don't have any of these in, turned on. They're just sitting there waiting to be used, which is uh, uh, just makes it easier to have them right there. The next section is the aux section, and these are basically buses that I set up, and I bring in all like instruments into each one of these. So basically, I've got lead vocal going into this bus. I've got background vocals going to this bus. Here's the drums. This is the bass. This is acoustic guitar, electric guitar. This is keyboards if I have happen to add a piano. And this is all the effects. All the effects you can see here, they go to the effects bus. I've got all the guitars going, to, all the acoustic guitars going to this acoustic bus. That means I can isolate all the acoustic guitars in the mix, and I can do EQing on the whole gamut of acoustic guitars or the whole gamut of electric guitars. It just allows you to affect one set group of instruments within your mix, if you will. So it's a real nice technique, and it, it's all before the stage. You can see these all feed into the stereo bus. This is all before the stereo bus. For example, the way I would use this is when I'm ready to actually mix, and I want to carve out a spot for, let's say, the lead vocal, I will actually use the CQ to carve out a spot for the vocal. Let's say, let's just, for example, let's just say around this range here, around the 2K range, okay? Or I might come to the, let's say, the guitar, right? And bring up this one, and I might cut that little range a little bit just to give that spot for vocals. That's basically how I use this particular area. It just gives you control over a group of instruments. So now these all feed into the stereo bus. And the stereo bus is where I use like ozone on here. Just I don't always use it, but I, I might use it just to test things out to see how it might sound with particular shaping. I've got Tone Booster's uh, Ferox version 3 on here to give it to that tape warmth. And I have L2 on here. When I'm cutting a sample demo, if you will, I might use L2 to bring to bring up the volume of, of a particular mix so I can hear what it would sound like with the L2 on it. So when I actually mix down, though, all the, all the uh, plugins on the stereo bus are usually turned off. Now, also on these buses, the aux bus buses and the, and the uh, stereo bus, um, I have PreSonus's new uh, console shaper. And then and this basically allows you to give the harmonic distortion and characteristics of analog consoles. Plenty of information about this on YouTube if you want to check it out. But the reason why I have it set up this way is because everything is coming into these buses here. So if I have console shaper on these buses, I'm affecting everything in the mix. So this is where I do my analog console shaping, if you will, right? Just in this section, just makes it easier. And then I've got a VCA set up for these buses, right? Actually, I should put this here, right? The VCA for these buses. For example, if I've got everything right and I just want to bring the volume of the whole mix down, let's say like a dB, I'll just use this VCA to do that and it just brings that brings them all down, which is nice. And then next I have the uh, an, an output here, which is basically used for my 11 rack for reamping. I'm not gonna talk about that now, but uh, maybe another video we can talk about that. Uh, and then I've got the main bus and the main bus has nothing on it. Uh, it's never gonna have any inserts at all. And generally it's gonna stay at zero dB. I might use this to put the whole mix onto mono, just to listen to it in mono, et cetera. Pretty simple, straightforward, and again, I'll use this as, as a basis, and let's say, for example, I don't have any background vocals, then I'll come here and I'll remove all the background vocal tracks and the background vocal aux. So I'll reduce, start with a lot, and reduce as needed. So once you've got your session template set up, then you wanna actually save it and I'm not going to save this because I, I made some changes. But then you can save it as a, a song, but you also want to save as template. And you can name it whatever you want. It'll go under user templates, so you can re reference this anytime you like within Studio One. So that's basically how to set up a session template. I hope this was helpful. If you hit the like button, if you like what you saw, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And also, please hit the subscribe button and uh, for more videos on home recording and home studio. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.